And so it begins. This week, Hillary Clinton and Mark Rubio announced that they will be running for president in 2016. Before them, there was Ted Cruz and Rand Paul. So brace yourself. Before November 8th, 2016, we're probably going to get a lot of this. Senator, during the primaries, you and Mr. Russell disagreed on integration. Now, we didn't disagree over the moral issue involved. I personally find any kind of discrimination wrong. But I don't think it's up to the federal government to decide something that is a local matter. I may not like what they do in Mississippi, but I will fight for their right to run their state the way they want to. And this. Let me tell you what's at stake in this election. Just about George Bush and the whole sleazy little cabal of them. You're going to get tax breaks for the wealthy. You're going to get a guy that doesn't know what a grocery store scanner is. I'm getting sick and tired. I am every single night hearing one of these carping little liberal Democrats jumping all over my you know you know what. I'm George Stephanopoulos. I'm director of communications. Bush was on the defensive. Another good night for Bill Clinton. Three debates, three wins. I guarantee you that if you do this, you'll never work in Democratic politics again. But please, not this. It never ceases to amaze me. The extent that Democrats will lie, cheat, and steal to win an election. The Republicans are the ones that are creating chaos. We're right on the goal line here. Just shut it down. Who actually won this election? Who won it? Now, politics in the movies make for perfect bedfellows. Everything you want in a movie, you'll find in a political campaign. It's the thrill of the chase. It's the suspense as the votes are counted. It's more treachery, betrayal, and backstabbing than in a season of Game of Thrones. The great acting, too. But compared to their cinematic counterparts, the candidates running in the months ahead will have some hard acts to follow. Take Broderick Crawford's politically incorrect barn burner from All the King's Men. Now shut up! Shut up, all of you! Now listen to me, you hicks! Yeah, you're hicks, too, and they fooled you a thousand times just like they fooled me. But this time I'm gonna fool somebody. I'm gonna stay in this race. I'm on my own and I'm out for blood. Now listen to me, you hicks! Listen to me and lift up your eyes and look at God's blessed and unfly blown truth. And this is the truth! You're a hick! And nobody ever helped a hick but a hick! Now, to be fair to the real candidates, even the most seasoned political speechwriter is probably no match for Aaron Sorkin. Here's Michael Douglas in The American President. America isn't easy. America is advanced citizenship. You've got to want it bad, because it's going to put up a fight. It's going to say, you want free speech? Let's see you acknowledge a man whose words make your blood boil, who's standing center stage and advocating at the top of his lungs that which you would spend a lifetime opposing at the top of yours. You want to claim this land is the land of the free? Then the symbol of your country cannot just be a flag. The symbol also has to be one of its citizens exercising his right to burn that flag in protest. Now show me that. Defend that. Celebrate that in your classrooms. Then you can stand up and sing about the land of the free. Then again, some elections do not go according to script. Reese Witherspoon's Tracy Flick in election thinks she has her high school student government presidency all sewed up. But then along comes the school outcast with some reverse psychology. Who cares about this stupid election? We all know it doesn't matter who gets elected president of Carver. Do you really think it's going to change anything around here? Make one single person smarter, or happier, or nicer? The only person it does matter to is the one who gets elected. The same pathetic charade happens every year, and everyone makes the same pathetic promises just so they can put it on their transcripts to get into college. So vote for me, because I don't even want to go to college. Now, we've seen all too often politicians lose their way, but none have mea culpa like Spencer Tracy in Frank Capra's State of the Union. A man just stepped up and asked me if I was any better than the rest of them. No, I'm not. As a matter of fact, I'm worse than they are. They're out for all they can grab. They're one-way guys, but not me. I was going to play both ends against the middle. I sold out to them, but get this straight, I am no lamb led to the slaughter. I ran to it. 
I had the right idea when I started to talk to you people of America. The idea that you voters, you farmers, you businessmen, you working men, you ordinary citizens of whatever party are not the selfish scum that venal politicians make you out to be. I thought I could speak my piece straight out and forward. I thought I could tell you that this country of ours is young, it's not old, that we've just begun to grow, that all we need is courage, and from out of that courage will come a greatness greater than we ever dreamed. I wanted to tell you that we Americans are the hope of the world, and the secret of our great plenty is freedom, and we've got to share that secret and that plenty with the other nations of the world. As Woody Allen said in Annie Hall, if only real life were like this. Only 572 days to go. I'm Donald Liebenson, and I approve this blog.